speaking about the marahil al manhaj al salafi the phases of the manhaj al salafi that was Sheikh Abdullah al-Dafiri, he titles the Marahil al-Manhaj al-Salafi. And he goes on to mention, Ikhwan, that it's not intended by Marahil phases of the Salafi methodology. It's not intended by this, and I'm just paraphrasing what he said. It's not intended that the Manhaj of the Salaf itself developed or changed, right? During different periods and so on and so forth that it's not what is intended but here he would discuss some of what took place and the different errors the different periods of time as far as the application and the adherence and the implementation and documenting the principles of this manhaj that which the salaf of this ummah understood from the nusus al wahyain from the kitab and the sunnah so this is what is intended ikhwan so when he's again so when he says marahil the stages of the salafi methodology not that salafi has changed throughout time or went it, it developed or anything along those lines la but rather he'll discuss some things that took place in different eras and periods of time <clears throat> as it relates to its application, the application of this methodology, its implementation, and likewise its documentation. So the first marhala, the first phase that he speaks about, he says, وَهِيَ عَهْدُ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ and this is the era of the Salaf al-Salih. This is the era of the Salaf al-Salih. Ahl Qurun al-Ula. The first, the first generations. He says, وَهَذِهِ الْمَرْحَلَةِ تُعَدُّ مِقْيَاسًا يُوزَنُ بِهِ النَّاسُ وَالْجَمَاعَاتُ وَالْفِرَقُ He said, so, this phase is considered like a measuring stick by which one can judge and measure groups and sex and and by it truth can be identified and known from falsehood and likewise the religion may be understood with their understanding. Whereas Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, zakkahum, he praised those generations. The generation of the Sahaba. Naam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned the khayriya of those first three generations as we'll hear bi idhnillahi ta'ala. And he says, uh, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made incumbent that we follow what they agreed upon, the salaf. Allah azza wa jalla said, And whoever opposes the messenger after the guidance has been made clear to him. And he follows a way other than the way of the believers. And it's the shahid here. And they follow a way other than that of the believers. And the Sahaba. We will leave in the path that he has chosen and land him in the hellfire and win an evil destination. Surah An Nisa, ayat 115. And the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said, Upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa al Rashidin ba'di, after me. Tamasaku biha wa abdu alayha bin nawajib. 
cling on to it and bite down upon it with your molar teeth. Cling on to it and bite down upon it with your, with your molar teeth. So now, and this is a hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With this praise for the Khulafa al-Rashidin. Mentioning to hold on to his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin, the rightly guided caliphs. And then he emphasized, hold on to it, cling to it, and bite down upon it with your molar teeth. Now, and then he brings a narration collected by Imam Bukhari, Rahimahullah, going back to Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu anhu, he said, Qad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, خير أمة قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم. The best of my ummah is my generation. Then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Imran he said, فلا أدري أذكر بعد قرنه قرنين أو ثلاثة. I don't know if he mentioned after his generation two or three generations. And then he said, ثم إن بعدكم قوما يشهدون ولا يستشهدون. Then after them will come people who will give testimony when they are not called to do so. And they will behave deceitfully and practice deceit and they will not be trusted. They will be untrustworthy. They will make vows and not see them through, not carry them out. As semen. And fatness will appear upon them. And fatness will appear upon them. And some the scholars they differ regarding that jumla, the last one. What does it mean? And Ibn Hajj mentions a number of those matters. And, and one of the aqwal is that this is just a this is a dispraise of these individuals for their excess eating and drinking. Not the one who is heavy due to their يعني, this is something. How this is the way that Allah Azza wa Jalla created them? Not. It's not a dispraise of anyone like that. But the one who indulges, overindulges in ma'akil and masharib. Now, so these are some of their sifat. Those who will come after these praise with the generations. But the shahid is ikhwan. This hadith, Sheikh Abdullah Dafiri, he says, this hadith entails the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informing. Of the state of the ummah. And the hadith likewise entails guidance in a ta'seel, a principle. It entails guidance and it entails a principle, grounding of a principle. That principle is that the religion is understood with the understanding of the praiseworthy generations. That the religion, the deen is understood with the understanding of the early praiseworthy generations. And that's because they're from the best generations. They were the most knowledgeable people of the deen of Allah. They had more jealousy or they were, the they were the most jealous of people as it relates to the deen of Allah. Having more ghayra. Jealousy of the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal. قُلُوبًا Their hearts possessed the most understanding of the religion. وَأَقْرَبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْدِ النُّبُوَةِ And they were closer to the era of nubuwa, prophethood. They were closer to the era of an nubuwa. بالإضافة إلى أنهم أعلم الناس بلسان العرب ومراد الشارع. And in addition, they were the most knowledgeable people as it relates to the Arabic language. So understanding the khitab of the kitab and sunnah and their language. 
and they were the most knowledgeable the meanings of the Sharia. He said, "Kullu dalika yalzamu minhu anna alhakma kanu alay," and all of this necessitates that the truth is that is that which they were upon, and that goodness and success lies in following them, and evil and misguidance lies in being distant from that which they were upon. And then he brings the narration, we're not reading from everything, we're just selecting, so if you found the book, we're not reading uh, every paragraph, but we're just trying to, we're just selecting some selections from it to, due to time. Muhammad al-Husayn al-Ajirri, Imam al-Ajirri, he said, Rahimahullah, right? And Shaykh Abdullah Dhafiri, he's bringing these narrations and these statements in the aqwal of the a'imma, showing the necessity of the fahm of the book and the sunnah along with the understanding of the salaf of the ummah so he says imam al jurri mentioned alamatu man arada allah azza wa jalla bihi khayran suluka hadha at tariq a sign for whom allah desires good for is him treading this path what path is that ikhwan kitabullah the book of allah azza wa jalla the sunnah of his, of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the ways of his companions, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and those who follow them in goodness. Look, a sign for whom Allah desires good for. Following kitab, sunnah, and the ways of the salaf of salat, the pious predecessors. And those who follow them in goodness, rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. And what the Imams of the Muslims are upon. And what the Imams of the Muslims are upon in every ballot, in every region, all the way until the last of the ulama. Oh, all the way until the last of the ulama. Then he gives some examples such as Al Awza'i, Sufyan al Thawri, Malik ibn Anas, Al Shafi'i. Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Al-Qasim ibn Salam, and likewise those upon their way. وَمُجَانَبَةِ كُلِّ مَذْهَبٍ وَمُجَانَبَةِ كُلِّ مَذْهَبٍ لَا يَذْهَبُ إِلَيْهِ هَأُولَى الْعُلَمَاءِ And staying clear of every way not adopted by these ulama. And staying clear of every way not adopted by these ulama. Naam. Allahu Akbar. And then he brings the statement of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi, who said, ثُمَّ مَنْ طَرِيقَةِ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ اتِّبَعُ آثَارِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم باطن مظاهرا وَاتِّبَعُ سَبِيلِ السَّابِقِينَ الْأَوَّلِينَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ He said, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi, then from the way of Ahl al-Sunnah wal is that, they follow, is that they follow the narrations of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inwardly and outwardly. And they follow the path of those who were foremost to embrace Islam from the Muhajireen and the Ansar. Naam, that's derived from the ayah. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُمْ Derived from the ayah, in Surah At-Tawbah. Naam. He said, وَاتِّبَاعُ وَصِيَةِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم حيث قال And likewise they follow. Right? He's, again, he's mentioning from the way of Ahl al-Sunnah al-Jama'ah. He said and that they follow the advice of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم when he said, Upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiyin and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa cling to it and bite down upon it with your molar teeth. And beware of newly infinite matters, for indeed every newly infinite matter is misguidance. Up until he says, وَهُمْ يَزِنُونَ بِهَذِهِ الْأُصُولِ الثَّلَاثَةِ جَمِيعَ مَا عَلَيْهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ أَعْمَالٍ وَأَفْعَالٍ بَاطِنًا أَوْ ظَاهِرَةً مِمَّا لَهُ تَعَلَّقٌ بِالدِّينِ He said, and they wait in light of these three foundations. Right? Kitab, Sunnah. Manage Salaf. 
He said they weigh in light of these three foundations, every statement and action that the people are upon, inwardly and outwardly, from that which has a relation, a relation to the deen, the religion. Sheikh Abdullah Dafiri, he says, كما أن هذه المرحلة شهدت ظهور الفرق المخالفة لأهل السنة. Likewise, he mentions that these three generations in which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم testified that they were who? Huh? The, the best generations. خير الناس, right? These same generations with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praised, and before that Allah praised them, and those whose understanding of the religion, they had the best understanding of the religion, they themselves saw the appearance of innovative groups. They saw the appearance of innovative groups, and this is important. Because why? They're the best of mankind, they're the best people, they have the best understanding. Now we have to see if they saw these groups, how did they deal with these groups? How did the best generations, how did they deal with the appearance of the Firq al the innovative groups? Naam. So he said, فَتَعَامُلُ السَّلَفِ مَعَ هَذِهِ الْفِرَقْ مُسْتَنِيرِينَ فَتَعَامَلَ السَّلَفُ Excuse me. فَتَعَامَلَ السَّلَفُ مع هذه الفرق مع هذه الفرق مستنيرين بالقرآن والسنة. so the salaf they dealt with these groups deriving their understanding seeking light from the Quran and Sunnah. مما يعد معرف معرفة معرفة هذا التعامل سبيلا نعم مما يعد معرفة هذا التعامل سبيلا يقتدى به يقتدى به للتعامل مع كل مخالف ومبتدع. So the Salaf they dealt with these groups, deriving their understanding from the Kitab and Sunnah, and we benefit from this in knowing that the way they dealt with them as a means for us to follow their footsteps and their example when dealing with every, with every opposer. So again, when, they, when, they, when the Salaf, they dealt with these individuals, when they saw the appearance of the Firq, it, again, it wasn't something, they, they didn't deal with them based upon Hawa, based upon their own Ishtihad. They dealt with them based upon what they understood from the Kitab and Sunnah. And we mentioned some of those ayat when he talked about the Asl of Al Ishtima' that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded with, with unity and he forbade what? Differing. And then we mentioned some of those ayat. Inna minhum fi shay. We mentioned what Shaykh al Islam said about that ayah. Prophet said, like, You have nothing to do with them. That's from the ayat. And there's many other ayat in the book of Allah. It's other ayat in the book of Allah and, and there's narrations in the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, how did the salaf of this ummah deal with them? They dealt with them from that which they saw and that which they understood in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's a, it's a sabi in a path for us to know how to deal with, these, how to deal with every Mukhalif and every Muqtadir. We don't go outside of their way. Why go outside of their way when they're the best of the people? Why invent our own, why, why invent our own prison? Uh, excuse me, our own principles. Nusahih wa la nahdim. We correct but we don't destroy. As some, as some say. Ta'amalu fi ma tafaqna alayhi wa na'adhur ba'aduna ba'adhan fi ma ikhtalafna fi. We... Unite upon that which we agree, and we pardon one another from that which we disagree. Where did these principles come from? They're not, they didn't come from the Salaf. 
They didn't come from the salaf of this ummah. لا تجعل الاختلاف بيننا يعني في غيرنا سببا الاختلاف بيننا. Don't make our different regarding these individuals a reason for me and you to differ. Right? All these principles don't have a basis in the in how the salaf dealt with ahl bid'ah. Now, so Imam Bukhari he mentions. In this, in this Sahih, in the, in the, in the book of Al-I'tisam bil kitabi wa sunnah And you see, Ikhwan, look how he continues to quote from this chapter. Al-I'tisam bil kitabi Go back when you go to Bukhari, read this chapter, brothers and sisters. Go back to this chapter. Now, we know that the fiqh of Imam Bukhari was where? Huh? Somebody said it. And it's Abu and it's Tabwibat in the chapter headings. Go back and see the understanding of the A'imma, of how they understood the text of the Kitab and Sunnah. So Imam Bukhari he mentions in the, in the book of I'tisam al Kitab, it was Sunnah clinging to the book in the Sunnah chapter. The statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that said, Sunnah man kana qablukum, indeed you will follow the ways of those who came before you. And then he mentioned the hadith, his, his, his chain of narration to the hadith Abu Hurairah. Uh, Naam. With the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, لا تقوم الساعة حتى تأخذ أمتي بأخذ القرون قبلها شبرا بشبر مذراع بذراع The hour will not be established And to my ummah They take the ways of those who came before them Hand span by hand span, arm span by arm span They said who O Messenger of Allah such as the Jews Such as the Persians and the Romans He said and who are the people besides them Ibn Battal he says أعلم صلى الله عليه وسلم أن أمته ستتبع المحدثات من الأمور والبدع والأهواء كما وقع الأمم قبلها. Ibn Battal he says so the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he informed here that his ummah will follow innovated matters. He informed that his ummah will follow innovated matters and innovations and desires. Just as occurred with the previous nations. To the point in one of those narrations, and the Mutaymi he brings this in Iqtidah Sirat al Mustaqim, Akhart Ashab al Jaheem, that, that in the, specifically in the narration of Abdullah bin Amr ibn al As, when the Prophet said, he mentioned how this Ummah will follow the previous nations, right, to the end of that, and then he mentioned, he mentioned the hadith. وَفْتَرَقَتْ الْيَهُودَ عَلَىٰ إِثَا وَسَبْعِينَ فِرْقَةً The Jews split into 71 sects, and the Christians were split into 72 sects. And this Ummah was split into 73 sects, all of them in the Hellfire except one. Now, So, that matter of Mushabaha, that matter of Mushabaha, following Ahl Kitab, it will occur in this Ummah. Even as it, even as it relates to what? Splitting. As the Prophet said, he informed. Now. So the Prophet ﷺ informed that this will occur. That people in this ummah will follow innovative matters and they will follow desires. Just like occur, just like it just has occurred in the previous ummah, ummah with the Jews, with the Christians, with the Persians, with the Romans, and so on and so forth. Now, so Ikhwan, in that time of the Salaf, innovative sex appeared as we mentioned. The Khawarij, they appeared, the Shia, the Mu'tazila, the Murji'a, the Jahmiya, these different sects. Sheikh Abdullah the Fidi, he said, وَكَانَ لِلسَّلَفِ دَوْرٌ بَارِزٍ عَظِيمٍ فِي التَّحْذِيرِ مِنْ هَذِي الْفِرْقُ الْبِدْعَةِ And the Salaf, they played a tremendous and outstanding role in warning from these groups and these innovations. So the companions who witnessed the appearance of the Khawarij, for example, the Shia and the Qadriya, to kallamu fiha, they spoke against them. They weren't silent. They spoke against them. And they warned from them, such as Ibn Umar, and Ibn Abbas, and Wathila ibn Asqa', and others from the Tabi'een, and the Atba', and all of the Imams of the Salaf. And we know the narration of Abdullah ibn Umar, with the Qadriya and Sahih Muslim. 
The first hadith in Sahih Muslim. Upon Yahya ibn Ya'mar, who said, the first one to speak regarding denial of the Qadr was Ma'bad al-Juhni. He says, so I set out. I and Humayr and Abdurrahman al-Himyiri for Hajj or Umrah. And we said, only if we meet someone from the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that we may ask them what these individuals say about the Qadr. So we were given success to meet Abdullah ibn Umar ibn al-Khattab entering the masjid. So we surrounded him. One of us standing on his right, the other on his left. And I was sure that my companion will leave the speaking up to me. So I said, Ya Aba Abdurrahman. Ya Aba Abdurrahman. He called him by his kunya. He said, Innuhu qad zahar qiblana nasun yaqra'oon al-Qur'an wa yataqaffaroon al-ilm. Indeed, there's a pair in our area, in our region, a people who recite the Qur'an and they are diligent students of knowledge. So look at these two awsaf. Look at these two awsaf, ikhwan. Because you find some people, they become confused. MashaAllah, he got the book of Allah. MashaAllah, he sought ilm in this place or that place. Look at these two awsaf. يَقْرَؤُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَيَتَقَفَّرُونَ الْعِلْمِ They recite the book of Allah, the Qur'an, and they are diligent students of knowledge. <clears throat> they are diligent seekers of knowledge. And he mentioned من شأنهم. And that they claim that there is no qadr, there is no preordainment of decree. So Abdullah bin Umar, he said, إِذَا لَقِيتَ هَؤُلَا If you meet them, then inform them that I am free from them, and they are free from me. And what Ibn Umar was swearing by was that if one of them was to spin that the light of Mount Uhud in gold, then Allah would not accept from any of them until they believe in the Qadr. So this is the mawqif of one of the virtuous Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam regarding Ahlul Bid'ah. This was his mawqif, his, his position. And that was that of a tahdir, of ta making tahdir and warning from their evil. Warning from their evil. So now, Mikhwan, so this is one narration showing the stance of the Salaf towards the appearance of innovation and its people. <clears throat> Likewise, on, on the authority of Ibn Umar, from the narrations, is that he said, "Ma farihtu bi shay'im al Islam ashadu farhan." I have not rejoiced about anything of Islam more than my happiness that nothing from these innovations entered my heart. And there are many aqwal of the Salaf ikhwan regarding innovation and warning from innovation and warning from his people. Sheikh Khalid the Firi, Habibullah Taala, he compiled a tremendous book. Ijma' al-ulama. Ijma' al-ulama, the consensus of the ulama and warning from the people of innovation and desires. Tremendous book. It has a taqreed from Shaykh Rabi' Hafizahullah Ta'ala and others from the ulama. I believe Shaykh Ubaid Rahimahullah Ta'ala likewise. And he compiles many of these narrations. Shaykh Khalid al dafid the cousin of Shaykh Abdullah. That we're reading from now, his cousin. Naam. So, we're not going to mention all of the, all of the narrations, but the Shahid is Ikhwan, is that there are similar statements from the Salaf in this regard, right? Which clarify the methodology of the Salaf in dealing with uh, the people of innovation and its people in order to preserve a preservation of the religion and preservation of the aqidah, and commanding the good and forbidding the evil, and warning from newly innovated matters. All of this implementing the command of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said, "وَإِيَّاكُمْ مُحْدَثَاتُ الْأُمُورِ وَكُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ." Now, something that we all know, we all hear, what the Prophet says, "Some will repeat, week in and week out." So therefore, Ikhwan, نستطيع أن نقول أن هذه المرحلة 
مرحلة عظيمة في بيان وتوضيح المنهج السلفي لقواعد الدين وأساسياته. So therefore he said, Sheikh Abdullah Zafiri said, we can say that this phase was a tremendous phase in the Salafi methodology clarifying the principles of the religion, clarifying the principles of the religion and its fundamentals and its foundations which are based upon the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet and that this phase is a founding phase for understanding the religion. It's a founding phase in understanding the religion, the deen. And it is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to return to. Now, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose and elevated, and He chose this way, and He chose these people to aid His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to aid His deen and to fight in His path. Now, and He made their understanding a mizan. And knowing the truth and falsehood, Sunnah from Bid'ah, Naam. And the safe sect from the destructive sex. Quickly, Ikhwan, and just, we just go another 10 minutes, inshallah ta'ala. And we'll just quickly read from this last part when he talks about Al Marhalat Al Marhalat Al Thaniya. Al Marhalat Al Thaniya. The second phase. The second phase, Ikhwan. هي مرحلة التدوين ومرحلة تدوين السنة وكتابة منهج السلف العقيدة والتحذير من البدع حيث كانت هذه المرحلة في المئة الثالث والمئة الرابعة. The second phase is the phase of documenting the سنة. Documenting the عقيدة and documenting the منهج السلف and their warnings from the people of innovation. And this marhala occurred in the 3rd and 4th century Hijriya. Yani from 200 to 300 Hijriya, from 300 to 400 Hijriya during, that, during those periods. And that's why you find that many of these uh, imma who wrote regarding the sunnah and the aqidah, you'll find them that they, they, were, they lived in those years. And we'll mention some of them uh, soon, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. The books Ikhwan of the Salaf, written in Aqidah and warning from the innovations, or warning from innovations, they were written in two ways. The first way was Taqreer wa Bayan Sunnah. Affirmation, or they wrote, they wrote to affirm and clarify the Aqidah. And the Sunnah here means Aqidah. We know Sunnah, it comes with different uh, meanings. Meaning here, Sunnah meaning the Aqidah. So they wrote to affirm and clarify the Aqidah. And in doing so, they wrote books such as, with titles such as As-Sunnah, Al-Tawheed, Al-Iman, Al-I'tiqad. We'll mention some of them in a bit. And the second way that the Salaf they wrote, uh, in warning from innovations and, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and Bid'ah, was by way of Ar-Rudud, Refutations. And this is a rad, this is a rad on those who say they don't like refutations. It's a durura for the deen to be preserved. Ahl bid'ah they refute it. That's why some of the salaf they said, if I remain silent and you remain silent, when will the ignorant person know the sahim and the saqim? If everybody remains silent. And we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he took a mithaq from the people who know. That they clarify ilm and knowledge and they don't hide it. Allah took a mithaq from Ahl ilm. لِلنَّاسِ nasi wala taktumuna. Naam. So it's a must that there be bayan in time of need. And like Shaykhana Shaykh Ubaid rahimahullah would say, Rudud is a bab in abwab al ilm. Of course, it has. As shurut, and not everybody embarks upon rudud. And it must be done with ilm, and it must be done with adl and insaf. But rudud is a bab in abwab al ilm. It's, just, it's a, one of the subjects of, of ilm. So the second style in that which they 
the Saturday learned from innovation was through, back, was through books of Rudud. And the books of Rudud were one of three types. <clears throat> refuting a particular innovation, refuting a particular innovation, for example, Khadq Af'al Ibad Imam Bukhari, refuting Ahl Qadr and the Jabariya, Kitab al Ru'ya, Aidar al Qutni, and others, <coughs> refuting the, those who deny seeing Allah Azza wa Jal. So there were cer certain books refuting a particular innovation. Number two, They wrote, they wrote books refuting a particular firqa, a particular deviant sect, such as Al-Raddu al al-Jahmiya, Imam Ahmed, Al-Darimi, others. They have books, Al-Raddu al al-Jahmiya. So they refuted a particular firqa. And then from the books of Rudud were books refuting a particular shakhs, a particular person. Such as Imam al-Darimi, his refutation on Bishr al-Marisi. Imam al-Darimi's refutation on the Jahmi al-Anid, as he termed it, the proud, arrogant Jahmi, Bishr al-Marisi. So these are the three types of books on Ani and which the, the Salaf they wrote under refutations. Either they would write. Uh, they will refute a particular innovation, they will refute a particular sect, or they will refute a particular person. Now, so from these books, Ikhwan, just to mention, in some of these books that have been written, Al-Raddu al jahmiyyah by Imam al-Darimi, and for those who have the, the, the translation, you guys will have it in the book, Al-Raddu al jahmiyyah by Imam al-Darimi, uh, Al-Raddu al jahmiyyah before the Imam Ahmed, Khad Af'al al-Ibad, Al-Raddu al, al jahmiyyah Imam Bukhari, Kitab al-Sunnah, Ibn Abi Asim, Kitab al-Sunnah by uh, Ahmed ibn Hanbal, al-Sunnah by al-Marwazi, al-Sunnah by al-Khalal, Sharia by al-Ajurri, al-Sunnah by al-Barbahari, uh, rahimahullah, Kitab al-Tawheed ibn Khuzayma, Kitab al-Tawheed ibn, ibn Manda, al-Iman ibn Manda, naam, Usul al-Sunnah, Usul al-Itiqad, Ahl al-Sunnah wal jamaah Imam al-Lalikai, we mentioned earlier, naam. So, the point is, Ikhwan, is that this marhala, this stage, was the marhala of gathering the nusus, the text that have been reported in the Quran and Sunnah, with tabweeb waha and breaking them down to chapters. Nam, abwaab al sunnah, abwaab al i'tiqad. Gathering the i'tiqad and the athar of the salaf that were already. Passed down by way of mouth. They were already passed down by way of mouth. That's why you find some of the narration. Bukhari said, I met so and so, so, and so amount of shuyukh, al shuyukh wa akthar. They all said the imam was what? Qawl, amal i'tiqad. Right? It was already mushafaha. And the rihla fi talib al ilm. The pursuit in seeking ilm is played a tremendous part. Seeking hadith, meeting with the ilm of the deen. Learning from the narration of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and, 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 and seeing the application of the salaf and how they dealt with the innovators. To the point, it was a, it was a narration, I can't remember who, uh, upon who, one of the salaf, he was making tawaf around the Kaaba and he seen one of the innovators and he said, Had the fulan of fulan, fa'ahinuhu. This is such and such one of the innovators, belittle this individual. Make a tawaf around the Kaaba. Make a tawaf around the Kaaba. So the Salaf Ikhwan, they compiled that which they, that which came in the book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. And that's why if you go in the books, Al Ibana, and we didn't mention Ibana, Al Ibana, Shah Usul Itiqad, you find first they mention the narrations, Kitab Sunnah. 
They mention these narrations, and then you find them mentioning the statements of the Salaf regarding the people of Bid'ah. Don't sit with them. The statements of Fudayl ibn Iyad, the statements of Hamad, Hamad, the Hamadain, the Sufyanain, the statements of Imam Malik, and the statements of so on and so forth. Mentioning their understanding of these texts of the Kitab and Sunnah, and how even they dealt with the innovators in their time and the groups that appeared in their time. Nam. And that's why, Ikhwan, you find the likes of our ulama, they say what? When confronting the people of innovation, like we heard from Sheikh Rabi more than once, Bainan wa Bainakum, what? Kutub al Salaf. Between us and you are the books of the Salaf. Between us and you are the books of the Salaf. Why? Because the books of the Salaf, again, Ikhwan, they preserve for us how the Salaf they dealt with the people of innovation. Not these, not, 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 not these new qawa'id that many that, that, that some of these individuals have made up. Excusing Ahl Bid'ah or working with them and taking positions in their massage and so on and so forth. Praising them, some of them. New methodology. Method, methodology of al muwazana oh, Okay, we have to criticize them, we have to mention their good deeds at the same time. Not from the manhaj of the Salaf. Bainana wa bainakum kutub al-Salaf. Between us and you, and that's why, Akhwan, you find them making statements. We heard one of them say, when one of the brothers mentioned Shaykh Sunnah bar he said what? There they go quoting from their Bible again. Why? Because they don't want to hear from these narrations. Look at this evil statement, Ikhwan. How he described the book of Imam Barbahari, Shah Sunnah. He said, there they go quoting from their Bible again. Why? Because they know that reading from these books, knowing the, the, how the Salaf they dealt with Ahl al-Bid'ah, he's going to be exposed. His affairs are going to be exposed. They don't want to, they don't want to read from Usul al-Sunnah. And Shah Sunnah. And the different books that were mentioned, Iban Ibn Batta, Shar Usul Atiqat. They don't want they don't want you to read from these books. Why? Because this will clarify to a person the way that the Salaf they dealt with the Mukhalifin. Now, so Khan will stop there. This was the second marhala, the marhala of Jam with Tadween and so on and so forth. And inshallah ta'ala we're in there, be in the light for your patience, Ikhwan. And we'll see you be in the light tomorrow for the last lesson. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.